And welcome to Manitoba's Bar in New York City's East Village, where I'll be getting up close and personal with musicians you ought to know. Because when musicians get together, we gotta talk about it. We have a lot of special guests for you in the coming months. Coming up, we've got singer Joey Kelly from Buddy Love. We've got Russ Garrett, who's a merchandising manager and also the well, webmaster for the Yardbirds. We've got uh, Ricky Bird, guitarist, who's best known probably for his work with Joan Jett, but he also plays with a lot of other people. We've got Paul Collins from Paul Collins Beat. And we've also got Lanny Flowers from Texas, among others. And look who's here, it's our producer, Bobcat Ross. Good to see you. I am here with singer Joey Kelly, who I've known for quite a while, very talented man about town. And he's probably best known as singer of the band Buddy Love. Yes. But he's got some other projects, too, that we're going to talk about. But first, I wanted to ask you about Buddy Love. So, Buddy Love, you guys were together in, like, 1980. And when you put out a single, Sheila, and which still gets a lot of play, that was like a, it was a big hit for you, and I think that was what uh, launched your career with... Well, Buddy. yeah, it launched, it launched my career with Buddy Love, no doubt. I think we got together in 1979. Uh, I, I answered a Village Voice ad. And uh, I forget where we were, at Rock Bite Studios or somewhere, and I did the audition, and I made the audition. And then from then on, uh, I just kept going out to Baldwin, Long Island, to go see Doug Kazam, and we'd sat, sit down, and we'd go over some uh, uh, songs and material, and we'd get used to each other, you know. And uh, then we started rehearsing. Uh, one of the songs we did was Sheila. Um, we knew we were going to make Sheila the single, so what we did was we started looking up a couple of people to play with us on that single, you know, sort of enhance it. Um, Ronnie Guy from the David Johansson band played uh, Elka organ on that. What's Elka organ? Elka <laughs> organ is like sort of like a farfisa with that okay. kind of bup, 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 bup sound. Okay. Uh, just a different version of it, actually. And um, then I, I was, uh, I had met, I was working the Mud Club, I met Michael Brecker. And uh, eventually we became friends and I asked him if he'd play on the single. He said, Joey, I never played on a pop record before, but I'm going to play on yours. And I just melted. I freaked out. I was like, oh no, Michael Breck is going to play saxophone on my record. And then the rest was history. Uh, Vince Skelsa picked it up at WNEW and played it constantly. And that was the end of it. It was sandwiched in between, um, let me see if I got this right. I Want to Be a Lifeguard. Uh, I want to be a lifeguard. That fits right in there. Want to be a Followed up by um, Southside Johnny on the beach, and he would put he would sandwich Sheila in there, and that was it, really. That's great. Yeah. So we found some footage of Buddy Love appearing on the old Uncle Floyd show, oh, goodness which great. you're gonna love. Really, and you're performing Sheila.
she laughed to run, they run. Ooh, little Sheila's got the right D.O. It's on my, it's on my, it's on my favorite station. After that, you guys stayed together for a few years. You put out a couple of albums. No, well, we stayed together for about seven months. And oh, was it really only seven months? <laughs> it was seven months, eight months. I thought you were still putting out albums through 84. Well, something. that would have been Doug putting out that stuff. Uh, we didn't, uh, okay. no, here's what happened. Um, two, uh, about seven months after we, we got the deal, we, um, we broke up because it just started getting too intense. I mean, we can get into the reasons as to why. And we don't have to do that because there's a documentary yes. on, on, online that people can watch, right? Yes, that's very true. <laughs> I mean, look, it, it, the band's a lot of fun and, um, you know... Uh, no doubt, Doug wrote, you know, curtailed the songs to my to my vocal, and I really appreciated that. Uh, but you know, th things happen. You know, people get. Uh, uh, it's like a marriage. It's really like a marriage. But anyway, we got back together in 2007. And, That's what uh, I want to ask you about. So how yeah. did that come about? That after all those years that you. It was it was the beginning of the internet age. I found Doug on. He was on AOL at the time, and we started, we met up in a chat room, and we started talking, so I just said, hey, why don't we see if we can find Scott? He says, well, I know where Richie is, the drummer. I don't know where Scott is. So I says, I'll find Scott, because he was in Manhattan at that time. So uh, eventually I found him. Next thing you know, we, we signed with Richard Goddard in the Orchard. The record did great. And uh, Crying Town to this day is... Uh, is this you know, what's, what's in front of us right yeah, now? This is the one. album, That's yeah? That's the one. <laughs> Came out 2011, I think. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Crying Town, the single on that record, um, written by Doug and Tommy Burns from the Billy Joel band, and uh, Tommy Burns produced it, and there you have it. It's a beautiful song. It's a ballad. It's a well. ballad, yes. It's a ballad. I like ballads. So what's next for Buddy Love? You guys got more? Well, stuff we're not on. really sure. Um, some of the guys, uh, some of the guys in the group, um, would like to take a break. Um, I I can understand that. I think it's a good idea, maybe at this point in time. And but I'm me certainly. I am no uh, you know. Uh, I have no shortage of doing what I want to do. Right, I have the Joey Kelly All Stars going now, and I'm Tell very me about happy. That. It's just a bunch of guys who get together, have fun, and we play kick-ass music. I've, you know, the, the all-stars consist of anybody from, oh, I don't know, Johnny Rayo, Johnny Eggs, uh, 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 Dave White on guitar, Angelo on bass, Lon Roselle from the Brats on drums. I mean, we just have a great time. We go out there, we... We really try to bring the rhythm and blues back into uh, rock and roll. We have a clip of the Joey Kelly All Stars performing at performing at the annual Johnny Thunder's Birthday Bash. I love this one. This is uh, this is all my buddies uh, Johnny Eggs, Johnny Rayo, uh, Joey Vasta, and John Isle from uh, Ian Lloyd's band. We love it. I love doing this every year. So enjoy. <laughs>
else I know about you? I saw something online, but I don't know the whole story, and I really wanted to ask you about that. Uh oh. Um, no, and that's not an uh oh. I understand you recently had the opportunity to meet one of your idols, David Crosby. Yes, I did. So, what is the story? What happened? How that? How that come about? Well, uh, we belong to this this. Um, Cornell of the Arts, uh, Hudson Valley. Well, I'm not even really sure what it's called. It's this sort of Cornell club it is. And we go in there and sometimes you'll meet people that are doing Q&As. I met Jack Bruce there. I met David Crosby there. It was a blast, man. We had, a, And, you know, to sit down and talk to your idols and find out what they're really about is really interesting. I love it. Did he give you any good advice? or? Yeah, get out of the business. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't we always hear that all the time? <laughs> no. He, no. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> yeah, really. Don't quit the, no, it wasn't like that at all. I mean, you know, I met his son. I met his wife. They were just nice people. They were kind of intimidated by all the people that came to see them as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, after we... You know, kibitzed a little bit. Is that the word, Dave? Did I kibitz? Kibitz. You got the accent on the wrong slob. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> not bad for an Irishman. I mean, God. But you're in New York, and you Yeah, New get York it. or Brooklyn, there you go. Something else I wanted to ask you about. So you, you mentioned it in passing before, but I, I know you've got to have some really good stories. You used, to, <laughs> you used to, not only did you play at, but you worked at... Max's Kansas City yes. and at the Mud Club, yes. right? Yes, that's true. So what did you do there? And tell me some stories. You must oh, have seen some man. stuff. <laughs> the Mud Club was the Mud Club was an education. It really was. It was. Please the, just tell people for, for people who don't Mud know Club what the Mud Club was. The Mud Club was a club on 77 White Street in uh, New York City. It was uh, put together by this guy named Steve Mass, and uh, a co-partner in it was Brian Eno. And at the time, I was playing in a band in Brooklyn. Um, we were an original band. We were called Aviation. We were doing pretty good, uh, writing songs and learning the craft. And my bass player was a subcontractor. And he came to rehearsal one day. He goes, guys, guess what? I just won this bid on White Street. We're going to build a bar. I said, oh, awesome work. You know, make a couple of bucks. Next thing we knew, that bar turned out to be the Mud Club. And as it was, Steve Mass hired all of us that actually built the bar, constructed the bar, the tables, the, the speakers, the stage as his employees. Hmm. So next thing you knew, I was doing the door at the Mud Club. He wanted me in the front, and the only orders he gave me was, uh, well, first he gave me $2,000. It says, change your wardrobe. You're going to a place called Trash in Vaudeville. Uh, <laughs> which first. is still there. Yeah, so that was on St. Mark's Park. And secondly was that uh, the only thing I was to do was to let in people that look the freakiest I can find. And oh, that really? Wasn't, that wasn't hard is to do. Is that what they told you to do? That's what they told And it wasn't hard to do. And what did you one. wear? What was your wardrobe? Oh, the usual black pegs, T-shirt, you know, sneakers. I love Converse. You know, and that was it. So... But um, the Mud Club was an interesting place. It was the place where I really learned about the combination of music being fusioned with art. People like Brian Ferry, Talking Heads, the B-52s. Even though it was the new wave coming in, so to speak, it was just all very interesting. I had never seen John Cale and Nico before. I blew my mind watching Nico play harmonium or listen to William Burroughs do spoken word. Uh, watch the cramps. Peter Gabriel warm up for his Palladium show. I mean, just incredible things that I really guess I didn't appreciate at the time. I have to be hmm. honest. It was every day. It was happening, and uh, you know, I'm just working here, and you know, right. life goes on. Right. But then there were a couple of people at the Mud Club that took me under their wings, so to speak. Um, you know, Chris and Tina were very good to me from the Talking Heads, and. Um, uh, who are Joey Arias and Klaus Nomi, all these people, you know, just, you know, they took me under their wings and we'll show you how this is done. So I was like, yes. But if but I the, understand correctly, the Mud Club had like a little bit more of an art crowd scene than some of the other New York no clubs about at it. the time. No, so it's like a different... It's the only one I knew that yeah. was really, you know, um, uh, embedded in the art club scene. Um, people like William Coupon got their start there. Or, or Jean-Miguel Basquat. Yeah. Or Keith Herring. Right. These were these were people that came to the Mud Club every night. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was it was it was an interesting lesson. Let's take a magic ride.
worked at Max's Kansas City and also at the Mud Club. I'm sure you have some really juicy stories. Well, you know, there are some juicy stories. The one I remember, um, we, we started the VIP on the second room of the Mud Club and we started becoming really popular. And we used to let the celebrities in by the back on Cortland Street, I think it was. It was a freight entrance there, a freight elevator. We'd let them in, go downstairs, and then come in through a different elevator. Well, it became so popular, the Mud Club, that we started utilizing the second floor. And, uh, you know, I can just remember going to Dee Dee Ramon's birthday party, and you walk in the room, there was, they were really, like, not a groupie by no means, but I felt an aura when I worked in that room, and I needed to know exactly why. And when you see people all assembled in the room, for instance, Robert Fripp, Peter Gabriel, Brian Eno, Dee Dee Ramone, Brian Ferry, I, you know, that was an incredible place to be. It all those really people was. at once? All that's that's, that's a once. scene, man. That is that's a scene. scene. I mean, up in yeah. the VIP room, and it was incredible. And, uh, you know, things like that. And I remember, um, I remember I'm, I'm at the door, and things are taking off, and the, and the business is doing good, and people are starting you know, to recognize me and things like that. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting uh, leaning against the wall and uh, all these girls are passing by and they're, and they're staring at me, although I thought they were. As it turns out, who's next to me? Brian Ferry. So I'm saying, well, I guess I'm not that popular yet. So I was like, holy shit, man. I mean, you know, but no, really, it was, it was a great place to work. I learned so much. I met such great people. And, um, you know, I have to be honest, there's only been a handful of people that can honestly say that. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, that work the Mud Club and, um, and even Max's Kansas City, really. I mean, you know. But then, uh, after that happened, I realized that I just wanted to get back into music. And, you know, I, I enjoy the bar scene and, and, you know, hanging out and doing the door or being a bartender and, and, and commiserating. And I, I enjoy it. I had to get back to singing because that's really what I do, you know, so. But you know what I wanted to talk to you about? You know, Sounds on, uh, in the Village is closing. Oh, St. Mark's Sounds, yeah, the record Saint Mark's shop. Yeah, the infamous record shop is yeah. now closing. So I stopped by there before they closed, and lo and behold, I find this. Wait, all what does it say on the It says Sounds for six forty nine. Bargain Ben. <laughs> all, mobbed up, all mobbed up. Live at Goodfellas in Brooklyn, a boogeyman recording. And in sounds, it's selling for six forty nine. <laughs> now here's the thing. I know Boogeyman. I know Boogeyman well. I'm trying to figure out where the hell is my cut? <laughs> Who's making the money off this? I will need to talk to him about this. Did you this. even did you know about this? Or did I you, had no idea. You had no, idea. <laughs> no, no. I think Dave the Boogeyman has some explaining to do. With this one, because uh, you know, look, Jana, I don't. Right, lie. we're running you, out of places that we can sell want, our CDs and to you make extra even, money, <laughs> and you can't even sell it here anymore. But I'm saying to myself, I don't have a problem with this. I He's think like, this is a fan. I uploaded all, all, it to my computer. I don't need this crap <laughs> lying around my apartment. All mobbed up, never recorded before. We never did any recordings, legitimate recordings. But I guess we do have one out there. So, thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave the Boogeyman from 11L Radio New York International, and this is the new CD from Mark Lindsay. Great music, great music that you need to hear. So, Joey, I know you're very active in social media. This yeah. man tweets all day about <laughs> everything that's on his mind, and, yeah. and there are multiple Joey Kellys online, I believe. So, how can people find you, and which Joey well, Kelly should they Let me watch? first say, you know, you know, people say, Joey, you, you stay, what do you do? You sit in front of the computer all day? No, I do it from a mobile phone. There's something called TweetDeck, which I'm able to synchronize all these sites together. So, when I send out a tweet, it goes to LinkedIn, MySpace, Facebook, yada yada. So, you know, that's that's the way I do it. But anyway, you can get all Buddy Love stuff at um, buddylove.us. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Joey Kelly. If you just put in Mud Club Joey or Joey Mud Club, <laughs> I'll pop up. Or if you put in caps, Joey Kelly All Stars or Joey Kelly in caps on Facebook, you'll get my fan pages. So, we're out there. And uh, before I leave, I want to thank everybody for uh, uh, you know doing this interview. I think it's been great. It was a lot of fun. But most of all, I want to thank you very much. Oh, I want to you wish you the best of luck. Oh, you too, and, sweetheart. Uh, it was great. It was great working with you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks thank for you. coming and doing this. Anytime. 
So thanks for coming out, Joey Kelly. And that's it for God Talk About It with Jana Perry. See you in the spring, you can catch her in the fall. See you in the spring, you can catch her in the fall. Spot her in the winter when the snowflakes fall. Spot her in the winter when the snowflakes fall.